This is Michael Popak with a legal AF hot take about AF legal. No, it's not an ad. It's an exploration and drill down on Stephen Miller's Law Foundation, founded by this non-lawyer, senior advisor to then-President Trump. Stephen Miller created something called America First Legal about 90 days after Jan 6th. And this is an organization that is hell-bent on trying to attack democratic policies and file lawsuits, mainly to support the privilege of white people. There's no other way to put it. If you look at their long laundry list of lawsuits filed in the last three years, most of them without merit, including Equal Employment Opportunity Commission EEOC filings against universities and companies and corporations to go after them because they have diversity and equity and inclusion programs trying to, you know, balance the harms that comes from years of prejudice they, Stephen Miller doesn't like that. He doesn't like any type of affirmative action or DEI, a diversity and equity and inclusion type program run by any university or college, because it prevents white people from getting the same advantages they've always had. Now, look, I get law firms are often run on the administrative side by, uh, by chief operating officers who aren't lawyers, and that's allowed. But I think the state bars of the various states in which these lawyers operate should take a look at uh, AF Legal. Uh, America First Legal, as to the management structure there and make sure that non-lawyers aren't benefiting from and getting compensation from the provision of legal services, because that would be the unlicensed practice of law. Let's set that aside for a minute, whether they're committing UPL, uh, AF Legal, and talk about who they are and what they do. Well, their um, executive director, their general counsel, Gene Hamilton, he worked in Homeland Security and also as a lawyer inside the Trump White House and for Stephen Miller. And he's one of the ones that helped devise, along with Stephen Miller, those great immigration policies, those ones that were just heartfelt and heartwarming, separating families from each other in the immigration process, ending the Dreamers Act, trying to separate uh, children who were born here legally from their parents, you know, that type of stuff. And so what could go wrong with two people that try to deny uh, people uh, a humane immigration policy and the ability to live together as a family in the United States as taxpayers and hardworking citizens? What could go wrong when you put those two together? Well, what could go wrong is AF legal or uh, America first legal. Let me break down for you. There's a great article in the New York Times that got my got my uh, synapses firing by uh, Robert Draper um, on uh, this legal group. I'd heard about him before. And I'd followed, followed them, but I like the way that Draper kind of pulled it all together. Now, there's another organization that pulled together the financing of this entity. They brought in almost $40 million. And no, just to answer the question that may be out there, they're not a legal defense fund for Donald Trump, although they do go after policies that Donald Trump is in favor of. They file amicus friends of the court briefs with, with like Judge Cannon down in Mar-a-Lago that got rejected because it was like a ridiculous asser- assertion that the uh, the the um, the way that the special counsel was appointed was improper in prosecuting Donald Trump. But they had other amicus briefs that were accepted at the Supreme Court level. Uh, the ballot, the uh, Colorado ballot case about the 14th Amendment, Section 3, they filed a brief there. On the immunity case, they filed a brief there. And so th- when they're not filing these kind of bogus um, uh, in, uh, employment complaints to try to get investigations going against woke companies like Disney, Coca-Cola, ABC, and the like, because they're trying to have a diversity and equity and inclusion program to promote qualified minority candidates, black and brown candidates. He doesn't like that because we'll throw up a picture. You can see he's not black or brown and and, uh, sort of fits the bill for somebody that may be uh, against policies like this. But listen to this math here, which I'll provide you, which comes from, tell you where it comes from. It comes from uh, Accountable, a website. You can find it at accountable.us. And in a press release from November of this past, of uh, 2023, they say the following, that... um, AFL's, uh, the AFL, that's what they're calling them, AFL, revenue exploded uh, to over $40 million from uh, having started at $6 million in 2021. Its president and executive director, Stephen Miller, uh, got a raise up to $77,000. They added Blake Masters to its board of directors. He's known for both a failed Arizona Senate bid and being uh, an extreme online MAGA right, right? They paid $240,000 to a law firm called 
Consovoy McCarthy, whose partner, Tyler Green, according to the reporting of Accountable, is the trustee for the Marble Freedom Trust, which is a dark money uh, group controlled by Leonard Leo, who's behind the Federalist Society and behind getting all those right-wing Federalist judges appointed. And that um, Leonard Leo directed at over $1.6 billion into the Marble Trust, controlled in part by this partner who gets $240,000 at least from the AFL to litigate cases for them. That's not the only law firm that's gotten the largest of the AFL run by Stephen Miller. The Mitchell Law Group out of Texas, the former Texas Solicitor General Jonathan Mitchell, who is a Federalist Society contributor. He also has argued at the Supreme Court. You heard him argue at the uh, Colorado case uh, and did and did fine. Um, it related to the uh, 14th Amendment, Section 3. That Jonathan Miller has gotten $414,000 through Donald Trump and uh, Stephen Miller. He also helped write the Texas abortion ban, SB8. That that Jonathan uh, that Jonathan Mitchell. So you've got uh, look at this ecosystem that's now been created, right? Donald Trump doesn't have to pay for these things. They're paid for by um, uh, organizations like AF Legal, who then uh, funnel the money to these law firms, who then either appear in front of Supreme Courts and other appellate courts as amicus briefs, or they do the argument themselves, and all of that. They also. The AFL, uh, American First Legal, paid $25,000 to the American Accountability Foundation, which is currently being audited by the Eternal Revenue Sur Service. It's dedicated to try to sink and stop Biden nominations and has been called in the past a well-funded uh, sleaze machine. Uh, so that one. They paid $75,000 to the Rule of Law Defense Fund, which is the Republican Attorneys General Association, or RAGA, a fundraising arm that did robocalls urging people to march on the Capitol the day before the Jan 6th insurrection. And they were an organizer of the rally. So you see where I'm going with this story? It's important that we examine Stephen Miller, who's taking in millions, tens of millions of dollars, and then handing it out to entities and organizations, lawyers and law firms, to help Donald Trump and the cause. So if people wonder, what is propping up Donald Trump in his legal in his legal world, besides the fact that the Republican National Committee has already announced that at its next fundraiser, most of the money is going to go to the Save America PAC, which is completely, almost entirely dedicated to paying the legal expenses for Donald Trump in all of his lawsuits, all the trials. It's not just the four criminal trials, it's the several civil trials that he's already incurred. He's, he's averaging, based on my estimate, he's averaging about $10 million a month in legal fees. That's his burn rate. And uh, where's he get all the money from? Well, Save America PAC is going to have a fundraiser with the Republican National Committee, which is controlled by Larry Trump, the daughter-in-law of Donald Trump. And then Stephen Miller is out raising tens of millions of dollars and hiring law firms that file amicus briefs and then do the, do the bidding for Donald Trump in handling even arguments at the United States Supreme Court level and in other courts. Um, if you hear just the list in their own words from their own website, which I'll... I'll uh, read you a little bit from here about what they're working on. Let's go there. Um, so the featured cases, this is the ones that they're bragging about on the website for America First Legal. The first one is Bentley Media Group versus Fulton County District Attorney's Office. That's Fawny Willis. And there, that's a open records request concerning all meetings between Fawny Willis and Nathan Wade. Now, this is, a, this is of course, a day late, a dollar short, because this has already been resolved by Judge McAfee, who's removed effectively Nathan Wade from the case and allowed Phony Willis to continue uninterrupted um, and uh, full steam ahead in uh, the prosecution of Donald Trump and 15 others. And she's asking for a trial as early as August of this year. But, you know, they like to put up all these phony cases, even if they have no result. Oh, we asked for open records request and asked for documents. Okay. Uh, then the next case they list is Brian Benneker versus CBS Studios. That's a white staff writer position, uh, a, a, a white writer for uh, CBS TV shows who uh, claims that he's not getting jobs that are now being given to LGBTQ or female underqualified, not as qualified as him candidates. 
and that it's because of CBS using their diversity, equity, and inclusion policies to try to increase minority representation, and that just chaps the ass of Stephen Miller. So they're proud of that case. Then they've, and that case is pending uh, in California. They got a case here, Jane Doe versus Fairfax County School Board, which they filed in, in a circuit court in, in Virginia, in which they um, are attacking transgender and the uh, people of who are who identify as transgender having uh, being able to use their name of their choice that's not their birth name and pronouns of their choice. He doesn't like that either, and how uh, restroom and locker rooms are not being properly labeled consistent with birth gender. That seems to be a big problem for Stephen Miller. Strong Communities Foundation versus Yafapai. I apologize to people in Arizona if I mispronounced that. Yafapai County, that's a case in which uh, they're very proud of, in which there's some, this is, this is the supporting case for Carrie Lake, where they're arguing without any evidence whatsoever that there was fraud in the election in Arizona uh, and widespread fraud at that, in their view, in the 2022 general election that led to Katie Hobbs becoming the governor and Carrie Lake uh, uh, losing. What they don't write is that every one of these cases has been found by the Supreme Court of Arizona to lack entire merit and that uh, uh, Carrie Lake has been sanctioned as a result and that there was no fraud in the election that would have been outcome determinative. But they love posting it on websites like this one. Let me just see if I can... if. <laughs> If I could read you another one, uh, just to show you where we're at. Oh, Scott Gerber versus o Ohio Northern University, followed in the Please Court of Hardin County, Ohio. There, they're representing a doctor, a tenured professor at Ohio Northern University. If anybody had Ohio Northern in their bracket, no, I'm kidding. Uh, and he was removed from the classroom and faced resignation because he vocally opposed the university's DEI, diversity, equity, inclusion, hiring policies, and he made complaints about sex and race-based preferences of faculty. He refused to, to resign and they fired him and, you know, got to get on the side of the white guy who's complaining against black and brown hiring. If you want to see where the uh, America First um, legal properly belongs, you can read something like the late Philip Roth's uh, plot against America. I mean, this is really... This is this is truth is stranger and more dangerous than fact than fiction, and um, if you're interested, you know this isn't a book club. I'm not Oprah, <laughs> but it is a book that I think would be chilling, and very timely for you to read when you hear about this type of organization that's been formed, uh, and that's hell bent on reversing years of of proper uh, civil rights and try to set it back a hundred years. I mean they were emboldened. Stephen Miller and the rest, when aspects of affirmative action were struck down by the United States Supreme Court in, in higher education. Now, the Supreme Court made it clear that they didn't think that that applied at all to corporate America, to the military, to uh, lower uh, schools below um, higher education, below universities and colleges. That hasn't stopped Stephen Miller uh, from raising money on the back of that arguing, you know, and immediately following that case in which they struck down in Michigan and Harvard, the uh, affirmative action programs and the use of race in the selection process for entering classes um, and make them more diverse uh, and more um, and more um, rewarding for the student body. I mean, and I can say that for somebody that went to a diverse um, university at NYU back in the 80s. And my experience was was enriched because of the people that I was a student, that I was a, that I shared uh, learning with as students, but you know this this is where we're at. You know the, the tone at the top is coming from the United States Supreme Court, and the people that are hearing it, even if it's even if they're tone deaf, are people like Stephen Miller, and forming things like America First Legal. We'll follow whatever they do. All the amicus briefs, all the advocates that are getting paid by them, all the people that are supporting Trump policy will rip the mask off and reveal it right here uh, on the Midas Touch Network and on Legal AF. You can follow me, Michael Popak at MS Popak. You can watch me and listen to me in a podcast we call Legal AF on the Midas Touch Network on Wednesdays and Saturdays at 8 p.m. Eastern time and then on audio podcast platforms of your choice. So if you like lawyers talking about things where they know what they're talking about at the intersection of law, politics, and justice, you've come to the right place. It's the Midas Touch Network and Legal AF.
And until my next hot take, you give me a thumbs up here and you can leave a comment. It helps when you interact with the content, helps with the ratings. Until my next Legal AF, this is Michael Popak reporting. Love this video? Make sure you stay up to date on the latest breaking news and all things Midas by signing up to the Midas Touch newsletter at MidasTouch.com newsletter.